Hi there, everyone. My name is Afik Abdul Hamid, and welcome to this three minute presentation on convolutional neural networks. Now, as you're watching this presentation, have you ever wondered how it is we perceive what we perceive? How it is that through our vision, we are able to differentiate different objects and tell of the distances between them in our vision and what we see. Now, vision is one of the greatest achievements of the millions of years of evolution on planet Earth. And we live in an incredible time period right now where human beings are currently trying to figure out how it works in order to replicate it within an artificial construct and essentially give computers the ability of vision and to see. Now, the current foremost computational architecture that we know of that comes closest to doing this is called the Convolutional Neural Network, or CNN. Now, CNNs, like other neural networks, are comprised of an input layer, some number of hidden layers, and a fully connected output layer where a decision is made. But where the CNN differs is in its convolutional layers that are capable of capturing spatial and temporal information within an image and basically which is just edges and distributions of color and intensity within an image and that's really what computer vision is all about we want to teach a machine where one part of an image ends and begins and where the next part ends and begins and assign a label and give meaning to different parts of the image now how convolutional layers work is you have this uh, kernel uh, that is slid across the image. And for each slide, it produces this convolved image. Now, this operation is simply just the dot product and you can verify it within the kernel. And to get this four right here, you have this side right here is uh, this operation right here. You can see it's involved a few more parameters such as the stride, which is the number of pixels in which the kernel depth, which is RGB, uh, or the, the number of how many zeros. And all of these influence the receptive field, which is the neurons. Now, uh, another important layer is pooling, which is this dimensionality reduction uh, that uh, helps to reduce the computational cost of the network, uh, speeding it up and also to further enhance the feature as extraction that I had mentioned earlier. Now, this is an example of max pooling where out of this four by four image, uh, we turn it into a two by two image by just selecting the greatest number within the different filter. So here we choose six, here we choose eight, here we choose four and three, for example. Now by arranging the convolutions and this activation, this rectified linear unit and pooling in different combinations, we we're able to create a network that is able to determine, that is able to detect uh, an object and recognize things like this cat right here. And the output is usually some uh, probability or confidence that the network assigns uh, to which class of object that the network believes that it has detected. Now this network uh, differentiates between cats and dogs. Now, it's important to understand that there is no one network fits all for uh, different types of problems, and usually deeper is better. However, that comes with the caveat of uh, it takes longer to train, and this leads us to a, a different realm of challenges on its own. Now, uh, for example, this is one example network, and there can be, you can configure the number of layers and in what order the layers are in. And there's no one solution fits all for different types of image. Um, now, where this technology plays a role in is in uh, driverless automated cars, uh, medical image segmentation, and uh, license plate and model recognition in um, traffic management and also in crime scenes, they can be quite useful. And with that, I end my presentation. Thank you very much.